Palantir co-founder Joe Lonsdale explains why he thinks the biggest threat to AI isn't China or a mishap with the technology. This is a fascinating clip on the future of AI. I want to talk about all things AI, tech regulation. I want to do it with Joe Lonsdale, Palantir's co-founder, 8VC founding partner alongside uh, Perplexity and Mark Andreessen. He is backing what is now called Leading the Future. It's a new super PAC supporting pro AI regulation. Joe, I want to talk to you about uh, what this super PAC is all about, uh, what the effort is here, and, um, and what that regulation to you ultimately looks like. Good morning, Andrew. You know, this has been an issue we're working on all year, obviously close friends with David Sachs and Kratzios running this in the administration. And listen, we are on the verge of something amazing for our civilization, right? We have we have tens of thousands of builders in our country. They're going to bring down the cost of health care. They're going to make construction, finally have productivity go up, make houses cheaper. Permits should only take, you know, hours instead of months. Just like education is going to be better for all of our kids and personalized. These are all things that are going to fix our civilization. And yet on both the far left and the far right, you have a lot of populists who, for, for really nefarious reasons, are opposing this. There are, there, are, there are reasonable people, by the way, who have some concerns and there's ways to compromise and push ahead for our civilization. But you have a lot of crazy populists. You have a patchwork of just really intense stuff they're doing that would break all of this. And we can't let that happen. And to you, the thing that you can't break is this idea of states taking this into their own hands. Is that the issue for you? You know, no, I'm a federalist, Andrew, uh, on most issues. Like I have teams in 23 states with Cicero Institute who are watching this. And I think it's reasonable for states to do a lot of things as laboratories of democracy. So, so in general, I'm actually on the state's right side overall. What, what, what's unreasonable is that you had Biden NGOs by, pushed by the last administration. You have European-like rules. And you have populists trying to put in crazy new regulatory authorities that demonize the builders, that demonize the tech. And if you force us to hop through regulatory agencies in every state, China is going to win and the builders are going to lose. And so, so the Interstate Commerce Clause exists in the Constitution for a reason. This is one of those examples we've learned from the California emission standards that broke the whole nation. And we're, we're seeing a lot crazier things being proposed now. So I, I think it's reasonable for states to have some power in a lot of different cases. That's what I want overall, but I don't want to break the whole AI wave by the populists. Um, Joe, we, we talked to Alex Bors yesterday, uh, someone I think that you're targeting. I want to show you, I think we've got some of the tape. Let's roll some of that tape for Joe. They are telling New Yorkers that I am their biggest threat for their quest and unbridled power over the American worker and our energy bills and uh, the safety of America. And they're right. What do, you, what do you make of that, Joe? You know, I think there's always an argument in our country between safety and liberty. And I think people, especially if they're not in the details, are right to be concerned and want to be safe. But, Andrew, if you're going to use safety to have arbitrary fines or arbitrary penalties where every state, including the radical blue states uh, like New York, are going to be able to break our builders' waves. That's not okay. Because listen, you have states trying to ban the use of AI in healthcare right now in ways that are going to prevent us from making healthcare cheaper. You have New York State already banning it in education. This is insane. Public schools in New York are not allowing AI. You're not, not even in any kind of school in New York. You have to call yourself a homeschool to use AI right now in New York, which means we can't personalize it and lift up the lives of the kids who are not doing well in the inner cities. This is, this is crazy stuff, Andrew. And, and, and the, the safetyism is, is what Europe does. If you want to be a poor civilization where you're poorer than our poorest state, like Europe, we should, then you should move to Europe. But America needs to stay free. What does the regulatory framework in your mind look like? Because I will say one of the critiques is, you hear this phrase, safety theater, that, that a lot of folks in the AI industry talk about wanting regulation, but perhaps know that Washington is as broken as it appears to be, and the chances of a federal regulation is so unlikely. We saw this with social media, for example, that, that maybe, you know, some people would argue, this is the cynical view, that the, the cynical view is to argue for, for federal regulation means you're really not arguing for regulation at all. So I think the federal regulation that people are talking about pushing is transparency on the very largest models. The New York Alex Boris rule, says if you have like, you know, 5 million revenue or whatever, they're going to harass you. Harassing our builders with small and medium businesses or scaling companies pr promoting disinflation, that's not going to help. If you're going to do something, right, it has to be on, if, on the super giant models, on transparency, on how they're, if you want to measure how they're trained them ideologically, fine. That's very reasonable to do. But, you know, a random legislator 
in New York State is not going to stop at the AI apocalypse. They're only going to harass and slow us down and make us lose to China. Uh, Joe, we only got a minute and a half, but I got to ask, uh, Google appears to have leapfrogged in terms of its large language model ahead of everybody else, at least for now. We just heard Anthropic with a new model out yesterday. How do you see the AI arms race as, as it's playing out and who may win? You know, I, you know, I think Grok was ahead for a while and they have some very big plans. I think I think very shortly after you're right, Gemini, Google leapt ahead. I think Anthropic is doing some really amazing things. I think this is good for all of us. This is exactly what you want. You know, I'm working on hundreds, in my case, probably more like dozens, but my friends and I are working on hundreds of companies on top of these things they're building that are each going to bring disinflation, that are each going to help, you know, hundreds of millions of Americans. Uh, the stronger those models get, the more we can bring down costs, the more we can solve great problems. So this is wonderful for me and for all the builders who are trying to use it to help people. Quick plug, we've got something special for our most loyal viewers. We're doing an early release of our new AI course. In this course, you'll go from confused to confidently understanding the key players the real trends and exactly what is happening in the world of AI right now and why this matters. Because this is an early access just for our community, you can grab the entire course right now for a discounted price. This price ends Sunday at midnight. The course will be two to three times higher on Monday morning. Don't miss the chance to gain instant clarity on the AI landscape at the lowest price it will ever be. Check the link in the description. Cheers. Joe Lonsdale says the patchwork of state AI laws is about to break America's innovation advantage, and there's data points showing he's not exaggerating. By mid-2025, 47 states had considered AI legislation, more than 30 had passed new laws regulating the use or development of AI. Many prominent figures in the world of AI warn that the US could lose its edge not because of Chinese competition, but due to state level overregulation if state rules proliferate unchecked. So here's what Joe Lonsdale is getting at. Imagine you're building an AI company, you've got a great product, you're ready to scale, but now you have to hire lawyers for every single state because each one has different rules about what you can and can't do. California says one thing, Texas another, New York has completely different requirements. This is not just annoying, it's actually impossible to comply with all of them at once. Some defy AI in one way and others define it completely differently. Companies find themselves navigating dozens of overlapping compliance systems, forcing them to hire lawyers and build redundant reporting tools instead of investing in new talent or computing power. That's money that could go towards innovation getting burned on paperwork. And the part that really frustrates Joe Lonsdale, a lot of these state laws were written by legislators who don't actually understand how AI works. They hear scary stories about job losses or privacy violations, so they write broad laws that sound good, but actually just slow down the builders who are trying to solve real problems. The constitution already says you can't have 50 different sets of rules for national commerce. That's exactly why we have federal standards for things like car emissions or food safety. Otherwise, California's rules would force changes on everyone else, which is basically what's happening now in the world of AI. And the timing is important. China is investing massive amounts in AI, and Europe, trust me, I know, already has heavy regulations that's slowing them down. If America gets stuck in a regulatory maze where every state does its own thing, America will lose the speed advantage that has kept it ahead. And once you fall behind in AI, Catching back is really hard. But Joe's not just complaining about regulation, he's got a specific vision for what AI can actually do. Joe believes AI will bring down costs in healthcare, construction, and education, and the early data backs up that these aren't just promises. Research now projects that AI and cognitive computing could cut US healthcare costs by more than $200 billion a year, with clinical AI applications alone capable of delivering savings in the same range annually. So let's dive into what Joe actually sees here. He mentions healthcare getting cheaper, and there's some evidence this might be already starting to happen. Doctors spend ridiculous amounts of time on paperwork instead of treating patients. AI scribes can listen to doctor-patient conversations and automatically generate all the medical notes required. That can save hours every single day. More time with patients means better care and lower costs because doctors can see more people, but it gets better. AI can catch diseases earlier by analyzing medical images faster 
and more accurately than humans. Early detection means cheaper treatment. Instead of expensive emergency procedures, you can catch problems when they're still simple to fix. AI assisted scans can improve cancer detection rates significantly, while tools such as Palantir software can increase utilization of surgery theaters. All of this can cut expenses substantially per patient annually. And this is why Joe is getting frustrated. Several states have enacted targeted restrictions on AI use in healthcare. They're worried about safety or privacy, which is reasonable to care about, but they're writing blanket bans that prevent the good stuff from happening too. That means people in those states pay more for healthcare and get worse outcomes. And that, my friend, isn't protection, it's harm. The same thing with education. Joe points to New York, where a new bill would effectively bar generative AI from some classrooms. Think about what that means. Kids who are struggling could get real-time personalized tutoring from AI that instantly adapts to exactly what they're missing. But instead, they're stuck in one-size-fits-all classrooms because legislators are scared of new technology. The construction example is an interesting one too. Permits take months when they should take hours. AI can process applications, check compliance, flag issues all instantly. But if every city and state had different AI rules, nobody can build these systems at scale. So this is Joe's core argument. We've got tens of thousands of builders in America ready to fix these problems. They want to make healthcare affordable. They want education to work better. They want housing to cost less. But if we make them jump through regulatory hoops in every single state, they'll either give up or move to other countries with simpler rules. And then Americans don't get the benefits while people in other countries do. That's the exact opposite of what regulation should accomplish. One of our clients started with zero audience. Now they're doing $100,000 months thanks to YouTube. And they're not alone. We've helped three businesses hit that level just by growing them a YouTube channel. Want to see how this could work for your business? Book a call with me below.